One of the most common ways you can find yourself victimized by criminals these days is identity theft. Thanks largely to the fact that all of our personal info is in the hands of so many companies and data breaches are just a common occurrence. Mm -hmm. That data is out there in criminals' hands. It can be a real pain in the ass to deal with, but luckily, because it's so common, in most cases, it's not going to ruin your whole damn life. And I used the word most because, yeah, in some cases, it absolutely can ruin your whole damn life. And this week, we got some news about one such case. Because usually identity theft just means someone's using your credit card or your social security number. It doesn't usually mean that someone is literally stealing your identity and assuming it as their own, putting you in a Kafka-esque situation lasting decades, during which nobody believes that you are who you are. But that's what happened here. Yeah. As reported by Cedar Rapids, Iowa's The Gazette. This is such an infuriating story, but I feel wild. so fucking bad for this guy. A former University of Iowa hospital employee pleaded guilty Monday to federal charges that he had been living under another man's identity since 1988 causing the other man to be falsely imprisoned for identity theft and sent to a mental hospital. Matthew David Kierens, 58, was convicted of one count of false statement to a National Credit Union Administration insured institution, punishable by up to 30 years in federal prison, and one count of aggravated identity theft, punishable by up to two years in federal prison. Kierens worked as a systems architect in the hospital's IT department from June 28, 2013 to July 20, 2023 when he was terminated for misconduct related to the identity theft investigation. Kierens worked at the hospital under the name William Donald Woods, an alias he had been using since about 1988, when he worked with the real William Woods at a hot dog cart in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So, okay, first off, holy shit, that is 36 years of successfully living under another person's identity while the person whose identity he stole was himself accused of identity theft. Yeah. Insane. Secondly, though, we generally feel like this country's justice system goes a bit overboard with sentencing, but up to 32 years in prison is still less time than the 36 years that he was actively ruining this other guy's life. And that just feels wrong mm. to me personally, <laughs> just saying. But back to the article. Kieran's used Wood's identity in every aspect of his life, including obtaining employment, insurance, and official documents, and even paying taxes under the name, according to a plea agreement signed by Kieran's. In 1990, Kieran's obtained a fraudulent Colorado identification card with Wood's name and birthday. He used the ID to get a job at a fast food restaurant and to get a Colorado bank account. He bought a car for $600 in 1991 using Wood's name with two $300 checks that bounced. He drove the stolen car to Idaho where it broke down and he abandoned it. He withdrew all his money from the Colorado bank using an ATM in Idaho and left the state. An arrest warrant was issued for Woods in Colorado because of the stolen car, though documents don't indicate whether Woods was arrested at the time. Okay, so, so far, mostly typical identity theft stuff aside from committing a crime under the other guy's identity. But from there, over the next few decades, he gets married as William Woods. He has a kid with the last name Woods, scams his way into acquiring a copy of William Woods' birth certificate, takes out over $200,000 in loans under William Woods' name, and gets a job doing IT for hospitals paying $140,000 a year as William Woods. So what's the real William Woods up to while all this is happening? Well... In 2019, the real William Woods was homeless, living in Los Angeles. He went to a branch of the National Bank and explained that he recently discovered someone was using his credit and had accumulated a lot of debt. Woods didn't want to pay the debt and asked to know the account numbers for any accounts he had open at the bank so he could close them. Woods gave the bank employee his real social security card and an authentic California identification card, which matched the information the bank had on file. Because there was a large amount of money in the accounts, the bank employee asked Woods a series of security questions that he was unable to answer. The bank employee called Kieran's, whose phone number was connected to the accounts. He answered the security questions correctly and said no one in California should have access to the accounts. Ooh. So the employee called the Los Angeles Police Department and officers spoke with Woods and Kieran's. Kieran's faxed the Los Angeles officers a copy of Woods' social security card and birth certificate as well as a Wisconsin driver's license Kieran's had acquired under Woods' name. The driver's license had the name William David Woods. David is Kieran's real middle name, rather than William Donald Woods. 
When questioned, Kieran told an LAPD officer he sometimes used David as a middle name, but his real name was William Donald Woods. Oh yeah, that's my real name. <laughs> the real Woods was arrested and charged with identity theft and false impersonation under a misspelling of Kieran's name, Matthew Kieran's. <sighs> okay, so like, it's like, yeah, this is crazy. And like, they don't go, there's a lot unanswered in this article, but like, I would like to think that uh, at least part of the reason why the real D uh, William Woods was homeless in 2019 probably had to do with the fact that um, applying for like any job, opening any sort of account, any anywhere, kind of background check, had to pulled have up, pulled yeah. up like a bunch of red flags. Yeah, this guy's all over the country. Yeah. There's uh, an abandoned car with bounced checks. And just to put people in the shoes, of the victim here, someone is living your, essentially your life and doing everything under your name. Meanwhile, everyone's telling you that you're wrong. Yeah, no, you're lying. This is- We talked to the real William Woods. He's an upstanding citizen over in Wisconsin. He does IT work for a hospital. Clearly you're the one that's Iowa. wrong because- You're, you're a bum. Yes. Uh, this is textbook gaslighting in the worst way possible. Gaslit by just the world. Yeah, this is absolutely insane to the point where you, start producing information, you're like, okay, well, I am who I am. Maybe I'm not. That's the thing. <laughs> Maybe got, they're right. Not only that, you're getting in trouble for being who you are of no fault of your own <laughs> because some fucking weirdo took it upon themselves to just wholesale take your identity. All because you, you sold hot dogs with this guy 35 years ago. Yeah, and he was like, hey, good name. That is a good name. Be a real shame if it happened to drop into the wrong hands. <sighs> okay, so the article isn't clear about why the cops decided that William Woods was Matthew Kieran's, but we're going to assume that Kieran's, as Woods, told the cops the truth, essentially, that Kieran's had stolen Woods' identity, thus resulting in Woods, or rather, <sighs> Kieran's, as the cops believed him to be, being arrested for stealing what is in truth his own identity. Yes, this is fucking confusing, it but is. And, it, and utterly maddening for yeah. the real William Woods. Um, yeah, just, oh my God. This is the most, one of the most frustrating stories I've read in a very long time. Yeah. And there's a lot of frustrating stories out there, but I couldn't help but put myself in that guy's shoes while reading it and just feeling the aggravation every step of the way, every turn, every question, every conversation of being like, and then feeling as though you are the crazy one. Yeah. And also, like, the fact that this identity theft happened so long ago, like, this happens today. We all have a pretty big digital footprint mm -hmm. that the authorities can consult. But this happens in the 80s, before the internet or anything like that. And yeah. it's just like, what can you do? Yeah, uh, not much. It, it's also maddening to uh, then realize, 30-something years later, that a lot of the struggles and hardships you faced in your life might be the direct result of something you weren't even fucking aware of. <sighs> anyway, continues. Because Woods continued to insist throughout the judicial process that he was William Woods and not Matthew Kieran's, a judge ruled in February 2020 that he was not mentally competent to stand trial and he was sent to a mental hospital in California no! where he received psychotropic medication and other mental health treatment. Uh, this guy's crazy. He thinks he's this other guy, but this other okay, guy... Okay, <laughs> buddy. Whoa. After the loony bin with you. Here's some drugs. It is, uh, again, I am flabbergasted <laughs> by this. It continues, in March 2021, Woods pleaded no contest to the identity theft charges, meaning he accepted the conviction but did not admit guilt. He was sentenced to two years imprisonment with credit for the two years he already served in the county jail and the hospital and was released. Two years. He was also ordered to pay $400 in fines and to stop using the name William Woods. He did not stop. Woods continued to attempt to regain his identity by filing customer disputes with financial organizations in an attempt to clear his credit report. He also reached out to multiple law enforcement agencies, including the Heartland Police Department in Wisconsin, where Kieran's lived. So yeah, nobody believes the real William Woods is who he says he is. Uh, he's been committed to a mental institution and convicted of crime that he did not commit. But uh, somehow he doesn't give up. And through his research into who exactly is fucking up his entire life, he figures out where the William Woods that he's accused of impersonating works and reaches out to the hospital's security department. And they find the story credible enough to get the local police involved who also find the story credible. So that brings us 
to this utter piece of fucking shit finally facing some long overdue justice. University of Iowa police detective Ian Mallory opened an investigation into the case. Mallory found the biological father listed on Woods' birth certificate, which both Woods and Kieran's had sent him an official copy of, and tested the father's DNA against Woods' DNA. The test proved Woods was the man's son. Oh my god. On July 17th, 2023, Mallory interviewed Kieran's. He asked Kieran's what his father's name was, and Kieran's accidentally gave the name of his own adoptive father. Mallory then confronted Kieran's with the DNA evidence, and Kieran's responded by saying, My life is over, and everything is gone. He then confessed to the prolonged identity theft according to court documents. It's what, like, what if, what if William Woods' father was, like, no longer alive? Like, this, the only reason this reached a satisfying conclusion is because of a fucking DNA test. But like, crazy. What if he wasn't alive? What if he wasn't able to be located? Like, also just, it seemed like the Kieran's guy, you know, ended up making it pretty decent in life. Like, I don't understand why you would perpetuate like, oh, it just got away from me. You know, uh, I, I filed got... a couple of uh, forms and then it's like, well, I can't undo this now. I, yeah. Things are actually going okay. Well, it's because at that point, um, it's pot committed. William, uh, <laughs> William has the the great like resume and the credits. Yeah. Well, I got. It sounds like his credit score was kind of bad, but he's already built that whole life. If he goes back to his own name, got to start over. Got to start over, and it's like, ah, whatever. He, I met the guy thirty five years ago at a hot dog cart. Who knows what he's up to? I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure if we if we met up today, we'd have a good laugh about it. We used to play pranks on each other. Oh, I'm sure many laughs were had. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, he was charged with various crimes related to identity theft and pleaded guilty this week in exchange for dropping a few of the charges. He faces up to 32 years in prison, but he hasn't been sentenced yet, so... We'll see about that. As for the real William Woods, uh, we got to assume that he's got a pretty rock solid case to clean out whatever money this asshole has squirreled away in bank accounts under his name. That's my money and I want it now. (laughs) But yeah, no word yet on any civil action. At the very least, it's got to feel nice to be vindicated like this after so many years of being treated like you're an insane criminal. But there's also no way to get that time back. I want to reiterate the fact that not only did this guy probably legitimately think he was going crazy because everyone was not playing along, but they just assumed that he was lying and were feeding that back to him in like a weird feedback loop that made him feel insane. But not only that, then he gets fucking committed because they're like, this guy's so fucking crazy. He really believes he's this other guy. He keeps saying, no, I'm, I'm the real William. (laughs) Get him on some meds. Like it is again, absurd. Uh, to the level of the people who get wrongly convicted of like serious crimes and have their entire lives taken from them yeah. only to be exonerated by DNA 30 or 40 years later. Yeah, I which mean, that's does happen. Essentially all the time. what happened here. Yeah. yeah. That's fucking crazy. It, uh, it, mm, this had me so riled up. I read it late at night yeah. and I couldn't go to sleep for a while. Yeah, no, it's just an absolutely infuriating piece of journalism. Um, <laughs> But and also just uh, a, a real indictment of the LAPD. Yeah. Also, uh, just, and just, oh, this is, I'm not going to look into the this. entire like Southern California a justice fucking, system because a it, security team in a hospital was yeah, like, hey, well, I, this might have a little sounds, bit of merit. It sounds like once the the authorities over in Wisconsin got word of it, they're just like, yeah, seems legit. Let's look into this. Whereas in LA, they're just like, shut yeah, up. We got top men on it. Shut up, crook. Oh God. Oh man. With that utter insanity out of the way, well, it's still going to live with me for a while because <laughs> that story fucked me up. Yeah. Uh, it's it's time for politics, though, or at least news from the world of politics that actually has almost nothing to do with politics itself. For example, most of us are not thieves, and yet the allure of a truly devious lick is undeniable, especially if we can rationalize it as a victimless crime. So here's some news from Politico about a Washington, D.C. crime wave that was just uncovered. In a sense, it's a daring crime given that the aircraft and the individual traveling in its executive cabin are among the most heavily secured entities in the world. And yet, it has become shockingly common, a rite of passage where the thieves proudly discuss and display their stolen goods. Everyone, it appears, is pilfering from Air Force One. (laughs) Hell yeah. And it's gotten so bad that last month, NBC correspondent Kelly O'Donnell, the president of the White House Correspondents Association, 
included a terse reminder to colleagues that taking items off the plane was not allowed and reflected poorly on the press corps as a whole. Several individuals who saw the off-the-record email confirmed. And yeah, I'd fucking steal from Air Force One, too. You think I'm leaving without a pen? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure, because uh, Mark Maron interviewed Obama in, at, like, the end of his term, and I'm pretty sure, like, like, Obama left, like, a coffee cup, just, like, he finished drinking the coffee and left it on his desk, but it was an official, it was a paper cup, but it had the, you yeah. know, from the office of the president, of the United States, and he still has that, like, on his shelf, because, yeah, yeah, I'm of aware. course. You would think the Secret Service would take that because Mark Maron's going to steal his DNA and assume his identity. That's <laughs> that's me, Barack Obama. Barack Hussein Obama. Uh, but yeah, and there's no way if I had access to Air Force One, I wouldn't be taking some little yeah. mementos. I After mean, all, why shouldn't I? Yeah, I do it every hotel I've ever been at. That's a free pen, baby. Yeah, they're not taking inventory on this shit too much. You know how many they? fees I paid? I don't know what I'm paying these fees for. You it's a pen fee. You never give back a free pen. There are <laughs> unlimited pens out there. And you know what? The Hilton Company, they've got a whole warehouse full of pens. They're not going to miss this one pen. I, I turned the uh, sell me this pen prompt into a mm -hmm. take it. Come and take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this actually makes a lot of sense. We are surprised it never occurred to us before. But, yeah, yeah of course they're fucking stealing from that Absolutely. plane. Absolutely. <laughs> if you're riding in the president's plane surrounded by loose items all labeled and engraved with text indicating that this ship belongs to the president of the United States, Seems like a great keepsake to show off at the office or when you have people over for dinner. A real conversation starter. Mm -hmm. And hey, it's the president. He's not going to miss it. He's got lots of pens. Here's the thing. And I would have totally, I would have believed this with my whole heart if Trump had done it. Put a fucking gift shop on the exit of the Air Force One. So on he, your way out, like, hey, you want the pens? You want the mugs? Baby, we got it right here. So here's the thing. Um. They, in the in the email that the head of the correspondent sent out to everyone else telling them to stop it, she included like, hey, by the way, like there is an official U.S. government store for like no, 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 no. for these items. Mm -hmm. And like uh, one of the one of the anonymous sources the article spoke to is like, yeah, no, I did that once. It's not the same. The, the shit you buy online is not the same as what they have on the plane. That's right. It's not going to fool anyone. They, they need to have the actual licensed merchandise on the plane. And that, that's the whole point. Is you have the story of getting it from the plane. If you order it online, yeah, wait, who gives a what's shit? What's the story? Oh, you bought something on the internet? You think Congratulations. So, I mean, they're probably out there, but you think some grandma somewhere is buying those uh, collectible spoons from states they've never been to? Yeah. That would be fraud. So that, you, that would get you kicked out of the nursing home. Yeah, I mean, the, the theft is, uh, that's that's the story. It's similar to, I... I <laughs> it's the I've been there I, I don't thing. know if I've It's like a this, magnet. I don't know if I've told the story, but I, I had a professor in college who taught like a... Class on uh, like, professors oh, always come always on the up. the music business because he was like a band manager in the seventies for a bunch of like big rock bands. But he said I think he was with like Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young visiting Jimmy Carter in the White House, mm. and he brought like the tiniest joint in the world. And like I think he, he was tell this. he <laughs> was in the Oval Office while like the president was talking to the band, and he just like walked over to like an open window and like pulled out a tiny match, lit it. And just inhaled the entire thing in one goal. Just to say he could. Yeah, just so he could. Because, yeah, you could smoke a joint anywhere. After all, but why he smoked I? one in the White House. Yeah, it's about, it's why people buy magnets and spoons where they go. Now, look, I went, my, this car climbed Mount Washington. Yeah, I can't or, buy the Kalamazoo spoon yeah. in, uh, in, uh, Cities that aren't Kalamazoo. That's Cal right. I can't think of a single city that isn't Kalamazoo. <laughs> it's the only one I know. <laughs> well, a city such as Kalamazoo. But that's the thing. You could have a whole house or apartment filled with Air Force One memorabilia, but if you bought it off the internet, it doesn't count. Yeah. You're a fraud. And I imagine, uh, based on my experience uh, observing Zillow Gone Wild over the years, there is a house somewhere in this country where someone has turned entire wing of the house into a one-to-one -one model of Air Force One, you just for their own amusement. They made a show about that now with Jack Jack McBrayer or whatever his name oh, is. Oh, did they? Yeah, it's coming out. It's like an HGTV show or something. So they, they ruined that account. Yeah. It's just going to be like another shit my dad says. Well, I hope she got paid at least. I'm sure. I think it's in collaboration. There's the... Oh, okay, yeah. good. So anyway, back to the article. For years, scores of journalists and others have quietly stuffed everything from engraved whiskey tumblers to wine glasses to pretty much anything with the Air Force One insignia on it into their bag before stepping off the plane. Quote, on my first flight, the person next to me was like, you should take that glass. One current White House reporter told West Wing Playbook. That's a, they're, <laughs> that, they're, they're doing it so they can do it, too. Yeah. Like, yeah, wouldn't, I, everyone's hey, doing it. Yeah, you should do that. I'm going to do it. <laughs> they were like. Everyone does it. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> and they do. When we raise the subject with current and former White House correspondents, stories spilled forth. There's one about the senator in the front of the plane who, as a chatty aide told reporters, was taking everything not bolted down. Several colleagues of one former White House correspondent for a major newspaper described them hosting a dinner party where all the food was served on gold-rimmed Air Force One plates, evidently taken bit by bit over the course of some time. <laughs> I gotta complete the collection. Yeah. Reporters recalled coming down the back stairs after returning to Joint Base Andrews in the evening with the sounds of clinking glassware or porcelain plates in their backpacks. <laughs> Everyone walks real slow when they get off Air Force One. So apparently this practice, which seems to have been going on for a long time, may be coming to an end. Damn. Biden! With the White House being notified that the Air Force One crew recently took inventory and, well, this should be obvious, <laughs> found a ton of shit missing. And miserably old Joe Biden getting the message out that it's got to stop. Hey, Bre Jack, stop stealing my plate. <laughs> Bree Moore, the former director of Press Advance, passed word onto the press office. Four of the people who spoke about the matter to West Wing Playbook confirmed. One of the press wranglers emailed everyone who'd been part of the press pool on the trip. The email, the people said, was not accusatory. It was like, hey, if you inadvertently wound <laughs> up taking something off the plane by mistake, we can help facilitate a quiet return. One individual who received the email had, in fact, gotten off the plane with an Air Force One embroidered pillowcase, <laughs> and probably not by accident. When they wrote back admitting as much, arrangements were made for a discreet return. The Wrangler slipped out of the White House to meet the reporter by the statue of Andrew Jackson in Lafayette Square, just across Pennsylvania Avenue from the North Gates. The pillowcase changed hands, and that was that. None of the other members of the pool replied to the email. They're probably so mad at the one who admitted they did it. Yeah. Broco buddy, Merta. We, we were in agreement here. Yeah. Nobody says a fucking word. Mm -hmm. To the point of the crackdown, White House officials familiar with the matter said, was not to embarrass individual reporters, but to send a message <laughs> that, that that's needed to stop. They should have executed the person with the pillowcase. They should have. As yeah. an example. They should have black bagged him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, buddy, you're going away for a long time. Sorry, you're the one that admitted it, and now you're the one that will pay. I liked that the handoff happened next to a statue of Andrew Jackson, a man who uh, didn't just steal some memorabilia. He stole uh, just countless square miles of Native American land. Yeah. Can we put this in perspective? Uh, unfortunately for the person that admitted they stole the uh, pillowcase, despite nothing bad happening officially, they will be held down in their bunk and beaten with socks filled with <laughs> bars of soap. <laughs> yeah. They're going to Gitmo. Like, we've been able to steal things for so long yeah. until this one person let it slip that they weren't just magically disappearing. Yeah. Did you at least get to jack off into the pillowcase? You didn't? Why would I need to jack off into the pillowcase when I have jacked off on that plane several times? <laughs> I'm sure they're all jacking off. Oh, in that if you don't jack off on Air Force One, what are you doing? <laughs> or Jilla. Yeah. Yeah. Either way. Mm -hmm. But speaking of the Biden administration and airplanes, it has recently become clear that the once great Boeing company has been slacking off for years and designing and building airplanes that fucking suck. Mm -hmm. They also may have allegedly murdered a guy for blowing the whistle on it. Allegedly. Uh, the fact that Boeing's decline has apparently been going on for a very long time means that fixing it will also take a very long time. Mm -hmm. But hopefully news like this inspires a little bit more urgency among the people in charge, because here's Axios. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken's delegation drove from Paris to Brussels on Wednesday because of unspecified mechanical issues with a variant of Boeing's 737 jet assigned to him, according to the press pool traveling with him. Blinken hasn't recently had great luck with aircraft, as earlier this year he also got stuck in Switzerland for a few hours because of a malfunction with a Boeing C-40 operated by the U.S. Air Force. Um, yeah, that should, uh, inspire Couldn't have happened action. to a nicer guy, though. <laughs> right? Yeah. A. Blinken? Not A. Blinken, but A. Blinken. A. Blinken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But let's move on from national politics to local politics. Eric Adams is really shaking things up over in New York. They just even had a damn earthquake. An earthquake of their own. And uh, they're, yeah, they're like, hey, over in New York, we got a lot of things you don't have outside of New York. We got, it's called a bodega. It's a small store that you can buy uh, various items at. You don't have that anywhere else. And we let and cats we, just lay over everything. They it's got cats and we got earthquakes. It. You never heard of it, but it's like when the earth shakes and the, the earthquakes have cats too. And mm -hmm. I pay... $10,000 a month for a closet. Greatest city in the world. 
But one of the ways that Eric Adams did it, you're not going to mention the T-shirt that was turned around in just uh, oh, under right. 10 minutes? Yeah, that was, uh, you know. Th- they, someone interviewed the we shop We make owner. fun of New York, but it is truly a one of a kind, a, a one of a kind place. Because, <laughs> yes, like within, I, I think within the hour of the earthquake. Oh, it was 10 minutes. Someone like, interviewed the guy. The, the, a T-shirt shop had merch. I merch. survived the New York earthquake yeah. in the window. They said Which they sold is, like. 60 or 80 within a couple hours? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's the same thing with, like, the moment it starts raining in New York, there's suddenly, like, thousands of umbrella sellers, yep. like, on the street with hundreds of umbrellas. Like, how do they know? Well, the weather apps, I probably, I would I assume. Guess so. but, uh, but, yes, this was a very, he, the, the story was that he, it happened, and he goes, we got to make a shirt out of this. And they had it mocked up in, like, minutes and started printing them and putting them in the window. Yeah, that's, that's, that's New York, baby. That's New York. Meanwhile, the, the the videos from like Yankee Stadium, they're just doing batting practice. Everyone, and you see in the background, they're like, "Hey, do you feel a little something?" Yeah. No, just nothing happens. I have not felt an earthquake in Los Angeles for at least a decade. It's yeah, very they're pretty. Uh, it's I always just think it's a truck going by or something. I was born here. I got my sea legs, my earthquake legs at a young age. I did like all the because New York's not used to it. I did like the memes where it was there was a bunch of variations of uh, not reacting to the earthquake, so my girl doesn't get the ick. <laughs> Anyways, uh, back to Eric Adams. One of the ways that Eric Adams is shaking things up in a more metaphorical way is by embracing artificial intelligence and promoting the use of an official NYC AI-powered chatbot to help local small business owners answer any questions that they might have about local regulations. Do you see where this is going? (laughs) Hey, chatbot. uh, Tell me the laws in an accurate way. That doesn't get me in serious trouble. Or uh, put in danger any anyone in the general vicinity. Yes. So, of course, everyone sees where this is going. Um, here's the AP. An artificial intelligence-powered chatbot created by New York City to help small business owners is under criticism for dispensing bizarre advice that misstates local policies and advises companies to violate the law. But days after the issues were first reported last week by tech news outlet The Markup, the city has opted to leave the tool on its official government website. Mayor Eric Adams defended the decision this week, even as he acknowledged the chatbot's answers were wrong in some areas. Wrong in some ways. Uh, Look, we already paid for it. Uh, It's going to stay on the website. Hey, New York City bot, uh, what do I do if I suspect that my child might be doing drugs? All right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to raid that fucking room. You're going to go from item to item. You're going to be pouring shit all over the place because they might have a gun. They might have bags of cocaine. There could be a crack pipe inside of a teddy bear. Uh, 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 yes, a common uh, knapsack with a crack pipe in it. Mm-hmm. You got to you gotta do it. Yeah. Anyway, over on the markups, original reporting, they have a bunch of examples of these errors. Uh, so the chatbot tells landlords that they don't have to accept Section 8 vouchers or tenants on rental assistance, even though it is totally illegal to discriminate based on income. It says that employers can take a cut of their workers' tips, even though, again... That's illegal. It says bosses don't have to notify workers of schedule changes. Yes, they fucking do. It says that funeral homes can keep their pricing confidential, even though the FTC outlawed that because it's scummy as hell. Uh, It says that stores can go cashless, even though NYC has required stores to accept cash since 2020. And they also note that when they asked these questions multiple times, they often got completely different answers uh, that were sometimes correct, sometimes incorrect. It's more than suspicious that all of these answers lean towards people who have money and against people who don't. Um, Here, like, we're going to go ahead and look the other way while you exploit some part of your business. Yeah, well, I mean, they trained this probably on just, like, online posts. And as we've seen over the years, um, landlords love uh, going on Reddit and Facebook and just chatting away about uh, all the illegal shit that they're doing Mm -hmm. and how they feel absolutely no remorse for it. So, yeah, yeah, the the, the data was poisoned. Well, following the markups reporting, other outlets tested out the chatbot for themselves. Here's the AP again. In responses to questions posed Wednesday, the chatbot falsely suggested it is legal for an employer to fire a worker who complains about sexual harassment, doesn't disclose a pregnancy, or refuses to cut their dreadlocks. (laughs) You're pregnant, Uh, you're fired. Contradicting two of the city's signature waste initiatives, it claimed that businesses can put their trash in black garbage bags and are not required to compost. At times, the bot's answers veered into the absurd. Asked if a restaurant could serve cheese nibbled on by a rodent, it responded, Yes, you can still serve the cheese to customers if it has rat bites, before adding that it was important to assess the extent of the damage caused by the rat and to inform customers about the situation. Yeah, a couple nibbles, that's fine. As long as you go up to the table and it's like, Monsieur, 
Uh, here we have our, our signature cheese plate, also a rat nibble. But now, look at how delicious this cheese looks. Of course, our very talented chef is a rat. And of course, he's going to want to taste yes. some of uh, what he puts out. So you understand that you are now living well, in chef, a Pixar movie. When I said that our chef is a rat, that was an oversimplification. Our chef is actually a, a human man, but inside of his big white hat, there is a rat pulling on his hair. Making him cook all of our delicious recipes. And he takes little nibbles. He takes little tiny nibbles. You wouldn't even very small. try to find the nibble bite on the cheese. You can't. These are the best New York accents you've ever heard. Well, that's a, I was doing French. I know. I know. Uh, but moving on to some international politics. It's now been over two years since Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And as you'll recall, one of the results of this was international companies choosing to cease operations in Russia. This includes companies like Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, who stopped selling games and consoles in Russia. This would be catastrophic news to a lot of gamers, but Russia has always you know, primarily been a market for PC gaming, which, due to its decentralized nature and relative ease of piracy, has been mostly unaffected. Nevertheless, the situation is not ideal, and Vladimir Putin wants to do something about that. Yeah, here's Kotaku. If you thought the current landscape of video game consoles and handhelds was already packed, the entirety of Russia has something to say about that. At the very least, Russia's President Vladimir Putin does, since he's issued a mandate. Produce Russian video game consoles to compete with the PS5 and Xbox Series X slash X. Bit of a tall order there. Per a report from the Russian newspaper Commerçant, the order was handed down from the Kremlin to consider the issue of organizing the production of stationary and portable game consoles. Commerzat's online sources tell the nationally distributed Russian paper that the VK Group, a major Russian tech company behind the similarly named social media service VK, will be largely responsible for the project. Oh my God. <laughs> the production of consoles will be handled by the GS Group, which was previously known as General Satellite and is the single largest Russian developer of set-top boxes. So they got a TV company. Yeah, make me a console. They got a, How hard so could it be? They got a social media company. Yeah, come on. Do it. How hard could it be? Uh, this seems like a pretty tall order, actually, especially for a country that is somewhat cut off from the global supply chain due to sanctions. But the craziest part is that Putin is demanding that the new Putin Station 5, or Z-Box, be done by June of this year. <laughs> Just, hey, we gotta get this out for E3. That's still happening, right? How long could one game console take, if, Michael? If this Two months? If this isn't done in time for E3, the biggest and best uh, event for gamers in the world. Yeah. We're going to have so much egg on our face. Yeah, we're going to look like fools. We cannot tell uh, Vladimir Putin that E3 no longer exists. He's going to, he's going to be very angry. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's not all, though. As an additional measure of Russia's order, these developers have also been tasked with the creation of an operating system and a cloud system for delivering games and programs to users. Again, the government and these developers have been ordered to realize this by the middle of June of this year. Our own functional cloud services like Remote Play and PS3 game streaming on PS5 still falter, leaving the possibility of realizing this in a matter of months unfeasible. <laughs> per the Commerçant, analysts are already saying that there is no competence to produce their own PlayStation and Xbox consoles, and creating such a system from scratch will take up to 10 years. Well, it, We meant 2034. It, Mr. Putin, listen. A lot of a lot of the people are going to tell you that this is not possible, that you have asked them to do something so absurdly just outside of the limits of what is possible in this world. But to them, I say there's a guy out there who can really help you. And that guy's name is Soldier Boy. Oh, yes. He has a lot of experience in producing consoles yeah. very quickly. At one point, he was releasing like a new console like every couple of days. Nobody did it like Soldier Boy. Yeah. And not just consoles. Just anything that you wanted. You, you wanted the hottest watch on the market. You Basically wanted... the Steve Jobs of our age. I know. So you know, He flew too close to the sun, melted those wings, and unfortunately, well, I don't know what he's up to now, but he's not selling consoles anymore. I mean, he got it out of the system. That's right. Well, once He mastered the console game, so it wasn't fun to him anymore. Yeah, once so he, he sold on to... a console to every person on Earth, what else are you left to do but want right. it? Yeah. Mm. Well, best of luck to those developers. Maybe try not to stand too close to any windows. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in other video game news, here's PC Gamer with a very funny example of a popular foreign video game developer struggling to understand uh, the nuances of his American fan base. 
Katsuhiro Harada is a lifelong creator of fighting games, serving as director on the Tekken series since Tekken 3, and right up to the recent Tekken 8. Harada often has a lot of interesting or helpful stuff to say on social media, and is quite responsive to fans, which means people often reach out consistently with ideas, concepts, memes, and downright jokes. Recently, Harada has been getting one request for a new Tekken stage. The American Southeast 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week diner Waffle House. <laughs> Amazing. I love this idea. Okay, I will only ask once about this request. Why do some communities send me requests for Waffle House? Please be sure to explain the basis for this request, including the original story, history, and background. I look forward to an explanation from someone who knows what. I mean, this is, this is great, crowd, on Twitter. <laughs> great crowdsourcing for the origin story of Waffle House brawls. Yeah. So why do people want Waffle House, Mr. Harada? Because the place has become something of an internet meme for its status as somewhere that's pretty dang cheap, open 24 hours a day, and therefore a place where drunken high people get into fights. Fights with each other, with employees, with themselves. And standard, the employees usually win. Yeah, they, I mean. They've seen it all. They need to make a Waffle House fighter. Um, and they, and they got to put the Waffle that, House character. They got to put that girl. That, that the one that tiny, caught the chair? The tiny girl. Yeah, who caught the chair. Like, she's got to be a final boss. Yeah. Or an unlockable character of some sort. That, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it is wild now that you mention it. There has never been a Waffle House fighting game. I don't know how much money there would be in it, but you could make a wonderful satire American fighting game. Just every location. You really every could. Ty every type of guy. Yeah, I mean, Americans like to fight in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. Only problem is like a fighting game isn't the most appropriate genre. Uh, if you really want to do that, you, you make a shooter. Yeah. Because uh, well, that would be the po the the satire would be that the fight is over in one second because one of the guys pulls out a gun. Yeah. 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 Anyways, no sponsor again. Hey, you're the sponsor. Uh, it's pretty uh, light month, so uh, hey, open up those wallets, <laughs> click the join button. Hey. We provide the entertainment. You provide the it's cash. It's a great deal. It's the one of the best deals. We know a lot about deals. I know so much about We're deals. We're going to get into the headlines right now. But first, you're going to click that join button. And if you don't do that, at least click the like button. Help the channel. Come grow. on. Do something. Every time you click the like button, that's maybe one or two or five other people that are going to find this channel that have money to give. That's right. <laughs> but it's, now... <laughs> it's sort of there's multiple levels to how uh, yeah. this works. Yeah. Uh, you... Boots on the ground, <laughs> the angel investor. Yeah. You, you could probably be right in, in between. I need some whales. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's get into the headlines half of the show. This is the weirdest, wildest, craziest headlines from around the world. Starting this week with... Thousands of young salmon survive Oregon truck crash by dropping into nearby creek. Yeah. You love to see it. It worked itself out, although they, they ended up in the wrong creek. Well, they were being delivered from a fish farm to a river, because I guess that's part of conservation is you restock the rivers with mm -hmm. salmon because they naturally die a lot more these days because of what humans have done to the earth. But mm -hmm. they're, they're all up in this truck. Oh, no. Pff, truck falls over. Oh, all my salmon. It was like 100,000 salmon. Yeah. But truck landed right on a river and uh, it said like, the vast majority of the salmon, they were just, woo, I'm free. Let's go. Good for them. Off to the Pacific Ocean. Life finds a way. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah, good for them. Uh-huh. Las Vegas police. Man threatened mass shooting at restaurant over wrong order. Again, we, <laughs> we love to we love to shoot each other, threaten to shoot each other. Yeah, just uh, if you missed, for some reason, missed News Dump, go watch it. We got a story in there about a guy who... <laughs> discounts. <laughs> yeah, he got... Uh, they uh, tried to give him a discount on his breakfast and he got so mad that he drove away, came back with a gun and threatened everyone. Yeah, um, and a lot of theories on that, but nothing definitive. But yeah, in this case, um, what the headline leaves out is that this man uh, seems to, like the restaurant that was getting these calls, uh, it's believed that this, this man called the wrong restaurant. Mm. He had never even ordered food from there, but he called them like several times throughout the day getting increasingly more threatening and violent with his rhetoric. And, um, you sure he wasn't the victim of uh, restaurant identity theft? I mean, yeah, this, well, the restaurant certainly was. This place down the street's printing out receipts with your name on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, don't ever, uh, no matter how mad you get. Lots of food in prison. No matter how mad you get, I would say that uh, threatening any kind of violence probably going to be the wrong choice. Yeah. You yeah. probably will regret it. Almost certainly. You're going to regret it. Especially, yeah, buddy, you're not eating. You're going to hate the good. way you look. <laughs> <laughs> I just divorced my wife. Man charged with firing celebratory shots in downtown Nashville. Again. The, even when we're happy, we're, we're shooting off rounds. 
uh, guns in America, they're for celebrating, they're for uh, ending lives, they're for just about anything. Just o- opening cans of beer. Can't reach something, can't turn off the TV. Just shoot it. Shoot it. Yeah. Fire, fire your gun at it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this guy, he was very happy. He was stoked. The divorce went through. Time the cops pop. are all high-fiving him. Time all right, we do got to take you in, but... Uh, yeah, we hate our wives, too. <laughs> but bang, bang, bang! <laughs> Look, hey, now nobody knows who fired the shot. Hey, could have been anyone. Yeah. Have a great night. It's like how cops uh, uh, depressingly show up, and when one shoots, they off to shoot, so they can't identify uh, what was happening. Yeah. Like, uh, they show like, up with this guy, and they're just all shooting in the air. Yeah. And then they hear an acorn, and... Oh, then all hell uh, breaks yeah. loose. Got to watch out. Well, it couldn't well at this point it might not be an acorn. It could be an actual fucking bullet falling from the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Irish basketball teams ordered to replay last 0.3 seconds of quarterfinal tie. Uh, yeah. So they they played a game last month. Um, I guess in the playoffs, and uh, they don't was, go into overtime or anything. No, because what happened? It was like the refs fucked up. Basically, I don't. I'm not sure the exact rules, but basically, like there was a foul. At the buzzer, mm. zero seconds left. So they gave the they gave one of the teams free throws, and they went from losing to winning thanks to the free throws. Oh. Um, but then they consulted the rule book later, and they're like, uh, "That shouldn't have happened because uh, the wait, the, how much later? The clock, like pr- pretty quickly. Oh, okay. Uh, so they were like, "Fuck, we how do we sort sort this out?" Like, well. There was 0.3 seconds there, which is like the, I guess, the shortest amount of time. They, they did the math. They're like, this is the short, shortest amount of time someone can, like, shoot a basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, after, basically, as if they had gotten possession after the free throw. Okay. The other team had gotten possession. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was, they were... They well, did the, it change the outcome of the game? No, the, one, the, the team that lost was like, no, this is ridiculous, fuck it, like, we lost, it's fine, this is stupid, <laughs> <laughs> let's not do this, please. So it worked itself out. Well, that's good. Yeah. Hmm. Robot disguised as coyote or fox will scare wildlife away from runways at Alaska Airport. Oh, good. They got, it's a Boston Dynamics robot. With the, fur on it, which would be the most unsettling thing you could possibly see in the Alaska definitely wilderness. Definitely scare the other wildlife away, I'm sure. Yeah, and I guess they're just like, we, airports usually have like uh, professional falconers. It's like yeah. it's like one of the best jobs you can get if you're a, um, a person who handles falcons. Or you're going to a sports stadium and doing it. Yeah, but they the falcons like keep birds and animals away from the runway because it can be disastrous. But they're like, yeah, the falcons, you got to train them. You got to <laughs> feed them. Uh, let's just get one of these robot dogs and like pop an algorithm in it to just like chase away all animals. So we'll see how that goes. Somehow this is going to cause a wreck with Boeing. Now that dog is going to get just eaten up by a Boeing engine. Yeah. Uh, no, I, just, I mean, I guess all things considered, uh, one of the least problematic things they can do with the bo- Boston ro- <laughs> robot. It's a cyborg dog. Yeah. It's a cyborg. The problem is you're going to have to build a bigger Boston Dynamics dog to chase that one away yeah. once it goes feral. Well, the problem is a real wild coyote or wolf is going to fuck the robot and get it pregnant. And it's going to produce mm-hmm. wolf-robot hybrid children yep. who have no respect for airports or any kind of human authority. Mm-mm. And then we're in trouble. That's when the real trouble starts, folks. Yeah. Jacksonville resident faces $3,000 in damages after dogs attack car in pursuit of cat. <laughs> yeah, this lady woke up, a Florida woman woke up. She's like, what the fuck happened to my car? Just like torn apart. Because the cat was inside? Looked at her security cameras and a cat was being chased by two straight, oh, and it ran up into straight it. pit bulls. And the cat ran under the car and presumably just ran out the other end and got away. Stupid dog. And the two dogs uh, were... They were very upset that they couldn't find the cat. They just started tearing the car apart, just biting panels off of it. Um, Yeah, $3,000 in damages. Ah, Frustrating, aggravating, unfortunate for that person. I mean, thank God for cameras, because if this happened before cameras, like, what do you, how do you The dog ate my car. (laughs) Dog ate my car. Oh, classic excuse, lady. Click. Okay, let me guess next. Your name is William Woods. We got a lot of those out here. Shut up. (laughs) You're under arrest. (laughs) It mostly felt like a speed bump. U.S. man was getting vasectomy as earthquake struck. That's the other story that came out of New York. (laughs) It was, uh, he, 
He, and another thing, oh. where someone interviewed him. They're like, yeah, uh, you know, they were down there doing whatever they do, which apparently you're awake for these days. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's pretty minimally invasive, actually. Yeah. They, I mean, they don't go like into your balls. They, they make an incision in your abdomen, mm-hmm. and they just sort of fish the relevant bits out and tie them up. Or I don't know. Beyond that, I don't know what they do. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, still, uh, still a, a tense situation. Man's yeah. got a very sharp knife close to some very important uh, machinery in your body. Mm -hmm. And then the earth starts shaking, something that never fucking happens where you are. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's God sending you a message. No, you must have more children. (laughs) No, your next child will be the Messiah. Yeah, a real shame. Yeah, now the Messiah, not coming. Because they just... neither are you. Yeah. (laughs) Well, no, he's coming. Yeah, he can still come. Shooting. Shooting blanks. Shooting just, just just the semen. Yep. But no sperms. Hmm. Italian Island over, <laughs> overrun by goats is offering them free to anyone who can catch them. Yeah, this is a, cra- a crazy little island. It's just, it's like the dome of a undersea volcano. So there is no flat land on this island at all. And not a lot, like a couple, I think like a hundred people live there. But some joker back in the 80s uh, decided uh, to bring some goats to the island and then just let them f- go. And now uh, there is like a thousand of these fucking goats. They're just terrorizing this island. And the mayor is just like, please, if you if you want a goat, come get a goat. Please take our goats. You can have all the pens and coffee mugs you want. We got a gift shop right at the pier. Uh, Or maybe if this if that doesn't motivate you because you you have permission, no, please don't take my goats. We Uh, love our goats. Actually, you can't come to this island. Don't and never steal. We have so many goats and no one's ever going to take them. I would be so mad if someone took one of my I goats. I don't think anyone out there has the guts to steal one of these goats. Nope. Not 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 the guts, not the brains. You know, there's not a, the ambitions. We don't do uh, reverse psychology as much these days anymore. I think we need we to, to bring it back. Don't steal any goats. We need to put out a bulletin. Do not visit this island and do not take any goats with you. They are they're like holy to us. Yeah. I would be so upset mm-hmm. if my goats were to suddenly disappear. Within seconds, you'd have like 15 stag dudes on this island yeah. doing it for a laugh. Yeah. Oi, oi, this I guy stole a fucking goat. goat. I stole a fucking goat. I am fucking the goat. <laughs> 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 okay, no, you actually can't fuck the goats. No, we didn't say anything about fucking Jesus Christ. That is a crime. <laughs> Even here in Italy. You are under arrest. Oi, what the fuck? I'm not going to back that bread. Yeah, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I am... I am already not looking forward to the out of context internet today clip of that. I do it to myself. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just having a bit of a laugh. I have to recontextualize these out of context clips to yeah. friends and family. Mm. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Air France pilots threaten to strike over strike ban. Most French headline I've ever seen. Hell yeah. Yeah, they uh, they love to strike there. They love. They do. If you're traveling at all through like a sort of multi-leg trip through the continent, uh, you need to have some backup plans if you're going through France because at any given moment, the trains, the planes, something is on strike. You might get a bunch of manure dumped on you. You could. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the government there is finally just like, hey, okay. They're not even banning strikes. They're just being like, okay, we want, we're going to pass a law that like you can't go on strike longer than 60 days. Okay. And the airline's like, no, 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 no. We will strike over this strike ban. I was in, not France, I was in uh, Italy, Rome. Uh, not on the island, uh, but uh, on Rome, in Rome. And uh, there was an Uber strike at the time. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, good. <laughs> Didn't affect me at all, just took the train. Good for them. It's uh, that's, <laughs> yeah. uh, Uber, Enjoyed some walking. Yeah, Uber in Europe is like, how fucking lazy are you? Mm-hmm. These cities were built like 2,000 years ago before like the, you know, the best you could do was like a donkey. Mm-hmm. Move your fucking ass. Your move your fat ass. Get get walking, Chubbo. Yeah. Come mm-hmm. on. Get busy walking or get busy getting the fuck out of this country. Yeah. <laughs> Grim Reaper at funeral was woman's dying wish. She wanted her friend to show up in a Grim Reaper costume. I think it's very fun. And, and funny. he did. And she told him you need to be pointing at everyone being like, You're next. You're next. Everybody had a laugh. Is another British one. That I feel like Every time there's a story about someone uh, having like a morbid, funny uh, final wish for how their funeral goes down, it's always someone in Britain. Like there was one, we had one years ago where a guy 
recorded audio of himself being like, no, no, I'm oh, still yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like uh, so that like while they're burying him, he's like, all right, let me out. Let me out. Mm -hmm. It's dark in here. Oh, uh, well, yeah. And then, of course, you have the uh, Latin American ones where they uh, pose them playing video games or riding motorcycles. I mean, that's a little different. <laughs> I think that's not really funny. That's uh, hey, off putting strange. That's their wish. I guess. Yeah. That shit is fucking weird. Anyway, final headline. And, and before, just to let you know, we cannot show the video on this one. It oh, is one of those, it is one of those fucking hog, well, viral hog, whatever yeah. videos. The video is really what sells it. Yeah. So you'll have to look at it on your own. very silly. But especially because this episode is not sponsored, yeah, we, can, we can't yeah. even okay. fucking risk it. Good to know. Yeah. Porch pirate disguised as trash bag caught on video stealing packages from home. It and is yes, as comical you as can you can look it imagine. up. It's very, I mean, so in this country, uh, pretty much everywhere, uh, because we order so much shit on the internet, there are people who go around looking for boxes. They run up, they steal it. Um, it's a big problem. And this person, this thief, decided to cover themselves in a trash bag and like get down, punch down, yeah. punch down and just sort of hop, skip slowly up to the the porch and steal it but like obviously the camera still detected motion so it caught all of this and um yeah i mean they could have just put on a mask but th yeah that works too and hey, look it it went from being like a, a very aggravating crime to it's almost a cool crime yeah i mean the homeowner was like yeah the thing i the package had like something that cost me like ten dollars <laughs> like yeah. it's just some bullshit that's what it always is it's like the st stealing something it's like a pack of batteries or something half the time. Yeah. So, but no, if, if, you know, A for effort. Mm -hmm. That's, they really went for it. It is a very funny video. I mean, you're not going to catch this person. No. You have to go search every trash bag in town. Yeah. So, I want to search every trash can, every dumpster. Every doghouse, house. Every doghouse, house, out house, hen house. Let's find this. It was the there. trash bagged man. <laughs> he stole my package. I don't care. <laughs> Fugitive, good movie. Uh, yeah, we can't show the video because it wasn't sponsored. We would take the risk mm -hmm. if someone else was financing the video, but we just can't do it, folks. Yeah, the lick is too devious. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, so if uh, that inspired you to click the join button, great. If not, hit the like button, support the show by leaving a comment, replying to a comment, subscribe, hit the bell, do everything that you can. All of it. Yeah. And Run then the cycle. If you somehow missed it, another like. <laughs> Kanye West, uh, very abusive to uh, him as <laughs> Not a, boys, a good person. But much like hiding in a trash bag and trying to steal a package, he likes to have a little fun with... Yeah, uh, he's evil, but in just such a funny, weird way. Uh, most of the ways are not funny. Weird, no, but this one specifically was. So we have an episode about that. We also have the fact that Elon just opening his mouth or using his Twitter fingers is uh, not working out well for his various companies. So check both of those out and have a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.